Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. As we continue in our study here in Matthew chapter 17, I know we're just breaking down a whole lot of uh, different words from the word. Um, so today our word is going to be accusation. Our word is going to be accusation. It's you know kind of funny how that follows from grace uh, yesterday, but today our word is accusation. But let's jump right in and look at God's word. Matthew chapter 17, starting in verse 24. He says, when they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? And he said, yes. And when they had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? From their sons or from strangers? Peter said to him, from strangers. Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. So here's the, the part that I want us to really settle in and think about this morning or this afternoon, this evening, whenever you might be watching this video. So in verse 27, Jesus says, you know, he, he points out to Peter that the, look, we're, I am a son of the king. You're a son. In your belief, you are, we're joint heirs with Christ, right? And, and I just love that word, joint heirs with Christ. So he says, as sons, we're free. But then he says this in verse 27, nevertheless, lest we offend them. Now, I know today in our society, our society is all about, well, I'm going to just do whatever I want to do, whatever I'm entitled to do. Uh, we really have an entitlement problem in our society today. And a lot of that has filtered into the church. A, a lot of it we feel like, well, you know, I've been here this long, X amount of years, you know, or I was here when it started. And, and, and we get a lot of entitlement going along with it. Not only that, then you get the new ones or young ones or a new generation that comes in and says, no, I'm it, my ideas matter, too. And, and we get this entitlement and prideful attitude, even within the body of the, uh, the church. And, and so as we think about this today, it's amazing that as Jesus said, Jesus had rights to do whatever he wanted. Right. He did not owe this temple tax. Um, he did not owe the money. Uh, sure, while he was on earth, he was following in. But knowing he was fully God, he did not owe a single penny. But lest we offend him. See, part of the thing is, is that let's remember that Jesus lived a sinless life. And even though uh, not paying this man-made temple tax, Right, not may, not paying that would not have essentially been breaking the law, but it could have been an accusation against him that people would have said he's broken the law. And so, part of the reason I believe Jesus says this is because he didn't want anybody to have any ground to accuse him of causing, uh, of sinning, or causing someone else to sin. So now you might say, well, wait a minute, he didn't owe it and it didn't matter what they said. No, it doesn't. And as we've said in Bible study many times, yes, it does not matter what people think. And yes, it does matter what people think. Um, because we're to be a shining example of Jesus Christ. And so when people see us and they hear us, if they know that we're a Christian, they're relating everything we do and say, they're applying it to God. So this goes back to even our, our first time we were looking at this. And I told you that Peter answered out of ignorance, right? When he says, does your master not pay the tax? Well, of course he's going to pay it, is what Peter says. See, he spoke out of ignorance. And, and now that he's spoken out of ignorance, we see this, this continual, like the snowball effect that's coming. And now Jesus is basically, uh, he's kind of been forced to pay this because of Peter's ignorance. So he's saying, well, now that you've said that, look, lest we offend them, let's just go pay it. God will provide. So Peter, go down here, catch a fish. The fish is going to have the money in its mouth to pay for. So see, even in that, God still provided. But the, what he was trying to avoid was the accusation. But let's remember this all started because 
And this is where it really applies to you and I. When we speak erroneously about God, people will take what we say as true. So when somebody asks you a question about God or they say something about your faith, if, if you don't wait and study and ask God to guide you, if you just answer the first thing that comes to mind or what you think or what you feel might be right, the right answer or what might be what you need to tell them, if it's wrong, they're going to apply that wrong statement to God. So then if you tell them that, Oh, well, look, you know, this one time I, I know God is just going to uh, just send the money uh, regardless. Well, maybe his answer for you in that moment was to send that money or send that uh, fulfill that need that you had at the moment. But maybe the next time around, um, what God wants is to not provide that because you don't really need it. But now if I go tell somebody else, they're going to just say, well, look, God supplied it for them every single time. Right. They'll just kind of draw it out a little bit more. Oh, every single time he, uh, he, he provided for them. Why is he not providing for me? And now all of a sudden they're, they have an erroneous thought about God because of something that we see. Now that's just a, a really uh, kind of flimsy example, but I hope you see the application here is that when we tell somebody something about God's word, if it's wrong, they're still going to apply that wrong truth that we told them to God. So that brings us back to the importance of interpretation, back to the importance of spending time in God's word, studying God's word. Because like it or not, people are going to judge you, whether that's right or wrong, they're going to judge you by what you do, what you say, the way that you act, the things that you post on social media. Uh, you know, it's, isn't it amazing how even on social media, well, one second, you know, on Sunday, everybody's sharing every uh, church and sermons and, and messages and stuff like that. That's great. But then on Monday, if you're still sharing dirty jokes, then which one are people going to believe? Which one are people really going to be listening to? All right, they're going to say, okay, well, I see the difference. I work with them. I know who they are. I talk with them outside of church. I know how they really are. But have we ever thought, you know, some people will say that, well, I can do this and it's not, it's not that bad. I can drink a little bit. I can smoke a little bit. I can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Watch this, watch that. But have we ever stopped to think that maybe the point of all of it is lest we offend lest we give somebody a reason to accuse us. But more importantly, lest we give them a reason to accuse God of something wrong. Maybe I just need to live my life a little better. Maybe I need to live my life a little bit more focused on Him. Maybe I need to live my life a little more in God's Word and listening to Him instead. So today, I just pray that you, these words would echo in your mind, lest we offend. Pray it's been an encouragement to you. God bless you and have a great day.